rest. Open your eyes and look in front of you. So look in front of you in your eye level, whatever you are seeing. You don't have to change the object, you know, just see as it is. And of course, you can hear the sound. And at the same time, maybe you have the, the, the whole physically body is experiencing some sensation or some feelings you're experiencing, you know. Or then you are also, thoughts are arising within. So your awareness is aware of everything, what you are seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, feeling, you know, sensation. Include the thoughts, the, all the five senses, six senses. The awareness is just there witnessing everything. So let's, as I told you last time, you know, this time we don't have any new additional new meditation we will continue do with the mirror like you know shine or laktong the mirror like mahamudra and it's very simple so i've been emphasizing don't try don't put effort let it happen itself don't involve don't interfere and don't do meditation. You don't have to do anything. The awareness is just there as it is from the beginning less time till the endless time. The awareness itself is the formless, the genderless, nationalless, and all that colorless. So, just keep seeing in front of you. Okay, keep practicing now, you know. The shoulder relax. Spinal gently, you know, or naturally straight. So I widely open, not gently open, widely open. Let every light bounce to the eyes and reflect in a, that eye awareness, uh, that the mirror-like awareness, all sound is reflecting in mirror-like awareness, the form is reflecting, the light is reflecting, the shape is reflecting, include the thoughts are reflecting, include the emotions are reflecting in this, you know, a mirror-like awareness, everything is reflecting. So as mirror is not judging or analyzing or, 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 or categorizing or, or pushing or pulling, ah, oh, this thought is good, this thought is bad, this form is I like, this form I don't like, this is good color, this is my favorite color, this is my, you know, uh, I don't like that color or taste or sound or smell or whatever. Just let it, as mirror, Anything can reflect in the mirror. The mirror will not push or not pull, not judging or not putting into categorizing or analyzing it. Anything arise as it reflects and that's it, it just go away. But nothing, no object can kind of uh, pollute the mirror. 
you know, no object. Anything can, even the shit can be reflected in the mirror, but shit, shit will not uh, kind of, you know, pure, kind of pollute that so-called the mirror. As the mirror, as an example. So when you are widely open your eyes, don't push anything, don't pull anything. And as I told you, even don't need to block any thoughts, even disturbing emotion arises, it's okay. It's not a bad. You feel sad, it's not a bad. It's a law of nature, you know? Part of your body is going through some little pain here and there. It's not a bad, you know? So don't put into bad and good category. Just see as it is. So right now, resting in a mirror like wisdom, awareness, let everything, include the thoughts that arise. Let even the thoughts arise, good, bad. So it is very simple meditation. It's a very simple and very profound. Of course, we call it Mahamudra. It's very simple. It is sometimes too simple, and you know, the people just don't get it. So, do you have to do anything? Nothing. It is doing itself. It's almost like you eat the meal. You don't have to do anything. It will just do everything its own work. Within all this, you know, guts and everything. Same thing with the meditation. The awareness is doing its own job. We just relax. So the, the problem people have, we always think we have to do something. No, you don't have to. Especially in this meditation, the Mahamudra meditation, we don't have to do nothing. We don't have to do anything. Just remember. See as it is, hear as it is, feel as it is, thought as it is, thinking as it is. Gently keep a smile on your face. Very slight, gentle smile, bodhisattva smile. When you go to the temples, you, know, you see these beautiful bodhisattva statues with a gentle smile, a compassion smile, the enlightened smile, the liberation smile, the joyful smile. And not only physically, also mentally keep that joyful smile within. Shoulder relax. In Mahamudra meditation, non doing is you are doing more. You know, so effortless meditation. Don't put any effort. Just relax. Even don't think that I am practicing meditation. I am practicing Muhammad. Don't even that 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 mindset. Like, you know, no need it. Just relax. Just having a, some relaxing time together. We are not doing some profound, you know secret mystery meditation, no, we are just relaxing. In the Mahamudra meditation, the most important, the key instruction is 
don't expect anything and don't try to you know go or to any state of mind don't that will misleading you are already in a dharma kaya 24 hours 365 days you don't have to go anywhere you arrived right now and don't expect anything like oh maybe something will going to happen nothing whatever it is it is the end you arrived there's nothing miracle you will not see any light or any bouncing any rainbow just what you are seeing hearing as it is it's a highest miracle keep this smile gently close your eyes now and just give a little rest to your eye take a deep breath if you need you know just when you take a deep breath so let it go if something you're holding inside just let it go when you exhale something from this morning or yesterday or this week or or this afternoon which will going to happen or not or about the future whatever you're holding inside when you exhale just let it go Now, gently open your eyes. So, the Lama Chino, Lama Chino Tinjian Sari, Lama Chino, Lama Chino, Lama Chino Tinjian Sari. So, your Lama, your Guru is just in front of you and blessing you. The whomever your Guru is, the whomever your teacher is. is just blessing you the joy the rejoice of your practice and blessing you uh, sometime your lama your guru the master is taking in a different nirmana kaya form to help you you know to protect you to guide you to show you to teach you so whomever the teacher you meet in your life all the teachers are your own teachers manifestation the nirmana kaya maybe this your wife can be your teacher's manifestation your children can be teachers your guru's manifestation your dog can be your your teacher's manifestation your colleague can be your parents you know and all the other teachers you met in your life all are your own teachers let's say your root teachers or root masters manifestation as a nirmana kaya to guide you to teach you to show you so grateful to your teacher the lama who show you the path the path to the spiritual home the path to knowing who you really are the lama chin lama chin tin chin sa lama chin lama chin lama chin lama chin tin chin sa lama chin lama chin lama chin tin chin sa lama chin so now slow you let the lama to kind of melt or dissolve to the om ah hum of the body speech and mind quality of lama to your head chakra the om the white om the head at the throat chakra the red ah the heart chakra the blue hum and just lama chin 
Lam Machin, Tin Chen Chala Lam Machin. So right now you are one with your Lama, the quality of body, speech, and mind, the enlightened quality. So right now, just open your eyes widely and looking through your Lama's enlightened eye, hearing through enlightened events, experience, the Dharmakaya, the oneness in the Dharmakaya with Lama and you, inseparable. So right now, all the quality of your Lama, your teacher, is within you. And just rest, you know, like a look, the mirror like wisdom through the Lama's the awareness quality, the Dharmakaya quality. So let's try. So I will just mute my uh, sound and let's try to rest for, you know, let's say, about five to seven minutes. So together we will rest in the Lama awareness. We don't have to do nothing, just rest. And it's okay to have some thoughts, emotion, feeling. It's just very normal. Don't push, don't pull. Let it as it is. So we don't have to analyze or judge or push or pull. So keep the gentle smile, you know, on your face and as well as in the mind. And just, you don't have to do anything, you know, just resting in a natural state of awareness. For that you don't have to visualize just as it is. As it is.
So did you notice that sometimes we lost into thoughts, you know? <clears throat> so it's so important that you don't identify yourself with the thoughts. It's so important. That's why we say mirror like wisdom, let the thought reflect in awareness. Let it reflect. Let it thought, let it think anything it wants to think. That is not a problem. You know, let it think, let it reflect in the awareness. But we don't have to identify the thought as a me, feeling as a me, physical body as a me, pain as a me, you know. So that that that's why we say mirror like wisdom. This is so important. Let it reflect anything, everything, include the thoughts in awareness. But we don't have to identify. You know, just as it arises, as it dissolves. This is so important. Let's try and don't try. So time to time, close your eyes. If you feel you need, your eyes need to relax, so then just totally, you know, and if you are lost or if you're lost in your thoughts, and you may close your eyes, you know. The quality is more important. Close your eyes and exhale and just let it go, whatever is holding you back, you know. And then just simply open your eyes and continue just resting. 
and you don't you don't need to think like oh what should i do am i doing right or wrong is this what rumbuchi means or not no don't you don't just see there is no particular way they just you are the awareness and just rest in the awareness as it is it's not you have to do something better you don't have to do anything you know just if your mind say oh what should i do just tell yourself don't need to do anything just chill tell yourself just chill <laughs> you don't need to do it. mind is always looking for object mind is always looking for something to do something to do what next what makes am i doing right am i arrived yet you know just don't don't bother you know just let it see as it is hear as it is feel as it is let any crazy thought arise let it arise emotion arise let it arise don't suppress and don't push don't analyze don't judge and when i say don't it looks like oh then we are putting effort no the the state of awareness is never pushing or pulling you know the information that we have the information that we have in our subconscious mind the the, the experience the all that we have collected in this last few decades or last few many year lifetimes so that information is creating a illusion of this is good this is bad i like i don't want this is i want to push this is i want to pull which means attachment push means aversion the so awareness the nature of mind the dharmakaya is never pushing never pulling never putting anything into category never labeling anything it's just as it is so it's you are you don't have to pretend or you don't have to visualize you are the dharmakaya you are the the state of you know the, the the natural state of awareness so when i say state i'm not talking about that you know, have to reach that state and i'm just saying the truth who you are right now so don't try anything so if you may you, so if you ask me when should i close my eyes just whenever you feel your eyes is little tired close your eyes or whenever you are you are lost into your thoughts close your eyes you know don't continue lost just close your eyes relax exhale it and come back and just maintain the mirror like wisdom there's a matter for a few minutes let's try keep the gentle smile on your face and just relax let everything anything to reflect in the mirror like wisdom to an awareness smile is not only in your face or on face but also in your mind so your teacher's smile your guru's smile you know so 
So you are right now one with your Lama. That is the Samai of Lama. If you can maintain the Lama, you as a Lama, you are actually, you know, holding the Samaya of Lama. So you can maintain you as a Lama, a Lama as a you, inseparable quality. So that is the ultimate Guru Yoga and that is the Samaya with your Lama. When you break this bond, that Samaya, that bond with Lama, and we are going back to the so-called samsara, which means duality. Lama is non-duality. Lama is in a state of dharmakaya, you know. And you are dharmakaya. So in the, state, in the dharmakaya, Lama and you are inseparable. So more you can maintain the Lama within you, inseparable. You are holding the samaya with your Lama. And that's the ultimate Guru Yoga. And that's helping you to liberating in this very moment. You are liberating. Keep the gentle smile on your face, the joyful smile. And don't try anything. more we try, more we are going further away from our true nature of mind. More we put effort, more we are going away from our true spiritual home. Don't put effort. Don't try. Don't meditate. Don't expect. Let it happen as it is. And in this very moment, you are one with your Lama. Which means you're also one with the Buddha, one with the Milarepa, one with the Padmasambhava, one with all the Bodhisattvas, Mahasiddhas. And Dharmakaya is the limitless, as I told you, is a boundaryless, is a formless. That's not you and Buddha as a separate in Dharmakaya. So that is what we call the Pragya Paramita, the mother of all the Buddha and Bodhisattvas, which you are right now. You, know, you don't have to buy or run or arrive or achievement. No, you are. You are the, the mother, Pragya Paramita, in this natural state of awareness. It's nothing, some mystery. So Milarepa was born from the Pragya Paramita, which right now you are also taking a birth. The birth of enlightened, the birth of awakened. The Padmasambhava was also, you know, the birth. Take a birth, 
were born from that Pragya Paramita. I'm not talking about the pra- Padmasambhava's body or Milarepa's body. I'm talking about the, the Milarepa as an enlightened awakening, born from the Mother Pragya Paramita, which you right now, all of us, all of us, is taking a kind of giving a birth within the Pragya Paramita, the natural state of mind. But the Buddha was also born from the same Mother Pragya Paramita, the wisdom, the ultimate wisdom. Don't try anything. Don't put the effort, don't visualize. Just very natural. Nature of mind. See, the name itself is pointing us the nature of mind. It's very natural who you are. What is not natural is pushing and pulling and categorizing and you know and then blaming to yourself and you know and then self punishing and then and then all this all these things. You are making it worse. That's not natural. Whatever growing naturally, they all are so called natural food, organic food, you know. When when you are like a chemically that you know genetically modified. That's that's not natural. Because they are pushing and pulling and you know. And that will create a disease and all these things, what is happening all over the world. So all our so-called suffering is nothing, the result of pushing and pulling, simple as it is. When you rest in a natural state, it doesn't mean there's no thought. Thought will be there, emotion will be there, pain will be there. Obstacle will be there, physical will be there, gender will be there, perception will be there. But you are not pushing, you are not pulling, you are not putting into categorizing, you are not labeling it. So it will not going to harm you or hurt you. It will not multiply any negative karma or seed. You might go through some sensation, a strong sensation, uncomfortable sensation, but it is not bad or good. It is not something sad. That we describe that way, you know. Let's close your eyes right now and just a little relax, shoulder relax, eye relax and take a few breaths, deep breath if you need it to let it go. But you all are doing very good, you know. So there's nothing right or wrong, you know. So don't, you don't have to worry, am I doing right or wrong? There's nothing right or wrong. 
you just have to slowly familiarizing with it. And you have to familiarize. That's it. There's nothing right or wrong. Okay, the gently close, open your eyes now again. Shoulder relax. So, widely open your eyes. Let the, all the light bounce to your eyes. And let the, all the form reflect in your awareness through your eye senses, the air senses, the nose senses, the physical senses, even the mental senses, you know, all the thoughts, emotion. Let it reflect. Now, when you do meditation or in normal life, Oh, right now, try to notice that, you know, right now I'm just giving you to observe or notice. We have a two option. Every second, every moment, every nanosecond, we have a two option. That is what the, you know, all the great... Mahasiddhas and all the great master from Mahamudra lineage saying, enlighten, just take one moment. No, the time of our snap. It is really very true. So right now, see, in this very moment, wherever you are, you have a two options. And everybody have this in every nanosecond. We have a trillions and you know, like a countless options. That's every second, every nanosecond, every moment we have this option. And which option you take, it's your choice. In this very moment. You have an option of identifying yourself. So we don't know who is yourself, you know. But normally what you do, we identify our physical form as a me. This body is me. This feeling is me. You're holding it very tightly. This perception is me. These thoughts, thoughts are me. You know, this emotion is me. The, all the five skandhas. Aggregate. So you're, if you identify these all five skandhas as a me, bound to be suffer, bound to be suffer. Do you, do you understand, all of you? So it just take a one moment. And the second option we have, the second option we have, that you are not the body, you are not the feeling, you are not the perception, you are not your thoughts, you are not your emotions. You are the nature of awareness. It's, you are not the form, you know, the awareness. You are not within the body or without the body. You are just the awareness in a natural state of mind. It never birthed a bone, and this will never die, or she will never die. She never born. The natural state of awareness. The 
aware of the form, aware of feeling, aware of thoughts, aware of emotion, aware of perception, aware of outer object, inner object, thoughts, everything. So the second option simply means that I am enlightened being. So here enlightened doesn't mean it's good or bad or high or low. Enlightened simply means awaken. The awaken simply means knowing who you really are. We should not use this word identifying, but if we if may if may if we may use in, in order to understand clearly or in, in, in order to make it easy. So you can like a more like a identify yourself with a, that awareness or the nature of mind. Or the Lama, if you don't know what is nature of mind, at least identify I am a Lama. That's it. As simple as though I am a idam. Not as a I as a separate from the Lama or the idam. I is just using as a pronoun. The Dharmakaya. So that's why I say I told you we have every moment we have a two options. One option is you identify with your form and, oh, I'm afraid of dying because I'm born and I will die and I will seek, you know, that, see. Because you identify with your body and you're afraid it's getting old and it's just, you know, and it, it's getting sick and, you know, attachment with this physical body and you're afraid of dying. Or you identify with all your material or your name or your position. Oh, you know, I am that my car or my wealth or my bank account, you know, if I die, what will happen with my wealth? So you identify with the wealth and you're afraid of losing it. You know, that's why we call it I or my, both are identifying. Or you maybe identify yourself with your family, too much attachment. Or you identify with your position, your power, your name. You're afraid you're losing your name. So every moment we have a two option. So just try to go a little deeper within you. You, you will be surprised. That right now, this very moment, just observe, notice who you are. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? ask this question to yourself you will just immediately get a reaction consciously unconsciously that how much you identify with the material family world name body this is me I'm afraid to die why should you afraid of die you will never die see now the question is, you as a body, you must be afraid of dying, you know. You as an emotion, you as a thought, you might be afraid of dying. But you as a dharmakaya, why should you be afraid of dying? Because it never, she never, she, she never give up, she never born in the first place, the dharmakaya. She will never die. As the Heart Sutra explains, never, you know, never burn, never die. You know, it's a formless, beginningless. That's who you are. The Heart Sutra is just describing who you really are. I mean, all of you, I recommend to read Heart Sutra every day one time. At least in the beginning, it's too abstract. It's a headache. But if you, if you like a relaxing this complex mind, try to see from your simple mind, you will understand the Heart Sutra very clearly. Like, oh, Heart Sutra is not just philosophy. It's just describing who you really are. And this is what I mean right now. Who are you? 
So you have option. Identify yourself with the material, family, body, feeling, emotion, thoughts. You are bound to suffer. Or you so-called that identifying I as a identifying or as an ego. You know? And it creates a whole duality. Or just let it go. Body is there, form is there, materials are there, thoughts are there, emotions are there, feelings are there, perceptions are there. As a reflecting, they all are reflecting in your Dharmakaya, but they are not disturbing or polluting the Dharmakaya at all. I like to give her this analogy or example, it might help you a lot. Water can't be polluted. There is no water on this earth which was polluted. Many of us sometimes we think, oh, this river is too polluted. No, when the water, when you go to the water level, you will see the the pollution is just outside of the water, the elements. You know, you can add the color to the water, but the water and color will be always it's a separate within the water. You can make it a sweet water, salty water, you know, um, and so on and so forth. You can change the color of the water. You can make a so-called pure water, dirty water. But in the ultimate, in the water, the molecule level, the water can't be polluted by anything. So that is the beautiful analogy of our who you really are. That's who you really are. You, as a Dharmakaya, your emotion, thoughts, your past experience, your story, your, and all that information, feelings, emotions, that is just there as a color, different color, different taste, different shape, include your physical body. But your Dharmakaya, the nature of mind was never touched or polluted by anything. So that's why I always give advice to students. When you are resting in a Dharmakaya, you are purifying, you are purifying everything. You're almost like you're filtering yourself. What do you call the rejuvenate? No? Regenerating. So you are the water. All the story happened. It's just like an illusion. It happened. Are you sure what really happened? That memory you have? Ah, yeah, last year, 10 years, 20 years. Are you sure that really all happened? You know, that's a big question mark, my friends. It's a big question mark. The memory that you're holding right now about your past and the worry you're projecting about your future. You know, is it really worth to hold? So this very moment, see, as I told you, every moment you have a two option. Every moment. So it's okay to, you know, you miss this last moment, doesn't matter. So in the Mahamudra, always say, I don't care what you have done until this moment. I don't care who you were. 
And I don't care what will you going to do in the future, but I really care in this very moment. Because you only have moment in this very moment. And this very moment decide who you are. It will not decide what you have done in the past. It will not decide. It's just an illusion. In this very moment, you have two options. You identify yourself with all the past narrative stories. Bad story, good story. All the accumulation of so-called material, you identify with that. Stories. In this very moment. Or you identify with your form. Or identify yourself with a sickness, problem, and problem, and problem, and suffering. Or you identify with your all the thoughts, the, all the crazy thought arising every second. You identify with that as a you, as a I. Of course, it's a bound to suffering. And you identify, or I identify myself with every emotion. Like a summer weather, summer rainy season. You identify yourself with the emotion. It's a bound to suffer. In this very moment, you have a second option. So I'm just here repeating so that you really get it, what I'm trying to say. Or it's just going deep and deep and deep into your mind so that you will not forget. The second option is just not identifying with all the past story, information, thoughts, include your form or material, whatever, perception, the five skandhas, you're not identifying with that. It is there. It is there. She's there. He's there. But you're not identifying. It doesn't mean you're ignoring it. No. You have to take care. But you're not identifying. Then what? Now identifying with what? The natural state. The natural state. So what is natural state? I, mean, I can't explain you. So that's why Masam Jimmy Sharapal would say, if you explain, if you describe, then I'm losing that what I'm talking about. So then some people might have things too abstract. No, the natural state of mind means Natural, like what you see, what you hear, what is reflecting. It's not blank out. It's not like a blank. It's very colorful. You know? But th that, that quality of awareness will not describe as a colorful, good, bad, joyful, you know, suffering. No, it will not put any you know, categorizing, you know, labeling it. No. So that's why it's called natural state. It just reflects everything, anything, but without pushing, pulling, categorizing, analyzing, labeling it. No. So that is the second option. Only if you can stay there for one second. I mean, I guarantee you, you know, hundreds of thousands of lifetimes. Your negative karma can, can be purified in this very second. In this very second. Some of you might be not believe that. Like, oh, what? That many lifetimes can be purified in just one second resting in the nature of mind? Yes. Yes. As I told you last week. The sonam ki chok and yeshi ki chok, no? That wisdom merit. Merit, you know. Good. So I 
I hope that you are now choosing to resting in the nature of mind rather than a kind of identifying with five skandhas. So more you're letting go, what will happen? The duality will slowly losing the strength. The more you identify with the five skandhas, the ego get solid and stronger. The duality get like a very, very kind of what you call strong and it's just the gravity of like pulling and pushing. So more you rest, more you resting in a natural state of mind. And as I told you, if you don't know really how to rest, just bring the Lama within you. That's it. If you have a devotion, now that also play a big role. If you have a devotion toward your Lama, and if you believe, if you have a little trust in your Lama that he or she is enlightened being, then maybe it works much faster. If you look your Lama as a, just a human being or friend, maybe it just work as a friend quality, not as an enlightened quality. So that's so important here. I'm sure you heard a million times, you know, so if you have a little devotion, little trust, the Lama is enlightened, then that quality bring to your heart, it just start to work. Okay, now gently close your eyes. If you may need to deep exhale, just exhale it. And just observe everything what I told you or digest it, you know. That you are the awakened one. You are the Lama. You are the Idam. So I always remind you, you are fine. Wherever you are, whatever you are, you are good. You are good. And we all are very fortunate, very fortunate to have this lineage encounter with Dharma, the teachers. We are so fortunate, you know, grateful or gratitude. And satisfaction. We rejoice to ourselves. We are so fortunate. We are so fortunate. We are so fortunate. Chang